Now that you've learned a few things about agency, real estate brokers, lenders, loans, and the process to buy, it's time to take action and move into phase two. The first order of business is to select a buyer broker to represent you. A good buyer broker will assist you every step of the way, making sure you are taking the right steps and making wise decisions. They are also familiar with a lot of local lenders, some of which they've had good experiences with and others not so much. Unless you have already selected one and are happy with how it's going, Web Realty has many experienced buyer brokers. An initial exercise I recommend you do is to fill out a home checklist. Buyer brokers from Web Realty will provide you with a home buyer's packet of information which will contain two copies of this form. If you are purchasing a home with someone else, it's important to fill out this form separately. This will help your broker see what things are important and not so important to each of you. Buying a home, no matter how expensive, is always an exercise in compromise, and this will help minimize the compromises you will need to make and find something that you or both of you really like. It's important to try and resist going out looking at homes until you've met with a lender and gone through the initial approval process. This wheel shows you the various steps that are taken from the initial loan application through to closing. I have provided a list of the most common items a lender will ask you to provide. Gathering this information before meeting with a lender will help facilitate this process. Unless you have already chosen a lender, you can get recommendations from your broker as to ones that other clients have had good success with and may be a good fit for your particular financial and or credit circumstances. Once you have chosen a lender, make a full loan application. Don't just get pre-qualified over the phone. There are reasons that are quite beneficial to you to take it to actual conditional approval. Once you've made loan application, your lender will send your file for preliminary underwriting review. Should there be additional clarifications they need from you, you will then be notified that they need additional information. Once they have what they need, hopefully you will get a preliminary approval with conditions. The difference between getting pre-qualified and pre-approved is huge. It can mean whether or not you get the house you fall in love with. Should you make an offer on a home, having only been pre-qualified, most sellers and their brokers will require you to obtain pre-approval within so many days of making the offer, or the offer is void. In worst case scenarios, your offer could be rejected altogether. It is not at all unusual to find a home you want to purchase that someone else also wants to buy. You will then be in a competing offer situation. One thing the seller and their broker will look at is the strength of the buyer's financing. If you aren't pre-approved, you are already at a disadvantage and your chances of being chosen as the buyer will have been compromised. This is why it is so important to get this step completed before looking at homes. A pre-approval will tell you just how high you can go in purchase price so you're not looking at homes you can't actually buy. A pre-approval versus pre-qualification means the lender has actually pulled your credit history and verified your financial situation. It will be accompanied by conditions which could be similar to the ones found on the sample pre-approval letter seen here.